Go on. I didn't tell anyone about the address, and I didn't waste any time going there. I had a feeling these guys knew what they were doing, and if I waited too long to jump on their spot, it would just be another dead end. So I go to the place around midnight, and it's this huge building. It looks like it used to be a factory or something. It doesn't look like anyone's there, so I pick the lock and go inside. Now I know how this looks. It's super unprofessional and it goes against all the rules, but I couldn't help myself. It was killing me. I had to know what was going on. So I got in and took a look around. The windows were taped up, and it was dark. I took my flashlight out, and saw that I was standing in one huge room. The setup was like the last place, but with way more stuff. There were pots, and burners, and tubes, and beakers, and all kinds of shit I didn't recognize. I wasn't sure what they were doing with all this stuff, but whatever it was, it was serious. The department had the last place pegged as a drug lab, and I'm sure it was if that kid was getting speed from these guys. But as soon as I started poking around this place, I began finding really weird stuff. On a bunch of the tables were things like surgical scissors, scalpels and forceps. You know, utensils for medical procedures. There was also this cage full of mice, and another one full of rats. Then finally, at the back of the room, there was this weird looking refrigerator. It didn't occur to me where I'd seen one before, but when I looked inside, I remembered. They use fridges like these at blood banks, and this one was full of samples. Each one was dated and had a serial number. Real professional lab type shit. Just as I was trying to wrap my head around what was going on in here, I heard something. I wasn't alone. Behind a door in the back, something was moving around. So I drew my pistol and walked slowly toward it. As I got closer, I could tell there was definitely something alive on the other side. I kicked in the door and said, Freeze! NYPD! At the other end of the room was an extremely emaciated man. He had his back turned to me, and he didn't flinch at all when I kicked in the door. He seemed to be completely focused on something in the corner. So I said again, NYPD, sir! I need you to turn around and put your hands where I can see him. He slowly stood up, and when he turned around, the first thing I saw was the blood all over his face. He had something in his hand, too. It was a half-eaten rat. He dropped it, and took a step toward me. Sir, I need you to stay where you are and slowly get down on the ground. He took another step toward me, then another, and another. Hey, stay where you are, or I will open fire. I edged back through the doorway, and he continued to edge forward. I'm not fucking playing around. One more step and I'm gonna shoot. Then, he lunged. That must have been a really hard decision for you to make, Anthony. I felt like it was at the time. I was real shaken up by it. I'd never done anything like that before. And I hoped that I could live out my whole career without having to. But the truth is, my decision to initially open fire was nothing compared to what happened next.
Fuck. Shit. Sarge, I need backup at two. I need backup at 230 East 21st Street. And medical attention. We got a wounded civ <sighs> Sir? Stay on the ground. Sir, stay on the ground. We got an ambulance. <laughs> <laughs> How does it make you feel to have been put in this position? I know what I did was wrong. I shouldn't have been there in the first place. But when I think about the people running this operation and what they're doing, I don't feel wrong about trying to figure it out and stopping them. These people are sick and demented and very intelligent. I fear their motives go beyond money and material wealth. And that's dangerous, because those kinds of motives are much stronger. So yeah, it doesn't feel good being in my position. It also bothers me when I pick up a newspaper and see the headline, Unhinged Cop Uses Excessive Force on Unarmed Civilian. People shouldn't be mad at me as much as they should be afraid for themselves. I know I used excessive force. But it doesn't say in the newspapers, or the police reports, why I used excessive force. You know the first 14 bullets I put into that guy didn't do anything to him? It was only the last two that went into his head that put him down. I don't know what they did to that man to make him like that. But if they did it to him, they can do it to others. Do you feel any remorse for what you've done? Seeing the man in that building was just like seeing the people from my dreams. He was already dead before I got there. No, I don't. <laughs>